Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, education thought leaders, heads of schools, and faculty heads. I am honored to have this opportunity today to share with you all the work that we do under the Chow Thai Folk Education Group, and also to take this opportunity to learn from many of the prominent speakers we have here today at the conference. The topic today is Inspire from Young. Steam into the future world of work. We will share from our perspective how STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths interrelates early childhood education to careers and beyond, and how this mindset is highly relevant to this generation of learners. CTF Education Group was established in 2017 by Dr. Adrian Cheng. CEO of New World Development and Executive Director of CTF Jewelry, and Mrs. Jennifer Yu Chang, our Group President, with a vision to empower the next generation to be future ready. Ned Ao is our COO, and I am the CSO in charge of new businesses. Our team's mission is to bring together resources and stakeholders to make a sustainable impact in education. While Chow Thai Folk is a household brand well known for jewellery, and the other listed company New World Development is reputable for real estate, shopping malls and hotels, very few are aware of the extensive reach the Chang family and the conglomerate has in the field of education. Under Chow Thai Folk Education Group, at the core of what we do is to operate schools and private institutes spanning across the entire spectrum of K-12. Our core entities include Victoria Educational Group, which is one of the largest chain of private kindergartens in Hong Kong, Delia School of Canada, a through-trained K-12 international school, and Arch Education, the private institution co-founded by Mrs. Jennifer Yu Chang and myself 12 years ago. We are reputed for our 12 years of track record counseling students into top UK and US boarding schools and universities, including more than a thousand getting into Oxbridge, Ivy League, G5 UK universities, and top 30 US universities. We also deliver after-school enrichment and academic programs to primary and secondary school students. Arch Community Outreach is our non-profit arm where we have the opportunity to collaborate with universities, and work with under-resourced students. Together, the school teams have more than a century worth of education experience. And every year in Hong Kong, all the entities added together under the group, we educate more than 12,000 students, spanning across the Canadian, IB, A-level, GCSE, and local curriculums. This is just to highlight Victoria Educational Organization celebrated our 55th anniversary this year. And over the past decade, we had collaborated with Columbia University's Teacher College to bring in a top reading and writing literacy program, applying the ethos to trilingual education. I will share more about the collaboration with Harvard Project Zero in my subsequent section. Delia School of Canada has also delivered quality education for more than 30 years, championed a STEAM-based curriculum and approach, winning many accolades in entrepreneurship, STEAM, and arts. Since the 1970s, the Chang family has supported many philanthropic initiatives, especially at tertiary education level. And this year, Mrs. Jennifer Yu Chang has launched her charity, JYC Girls Impact Foundation, with a focus to empower girls to become future ready leaders, much through extensive STEM exposure and immersion. In 2023, we're excited to bring about our most anticipated project, which is to build a world-class bilingual school at the heart of the Greater Bay Area, under the brand name of Benedict School Guangzhou. Taking a step back, what have we learned in the past six decades of running schools in Hong Kong? In different contexts, through different offerings, we support students throughout their education journey, from kindergarten to primary, to junior secondary, to senior secondary, to university, and hopefully they will be confident individuals entering the world of work. At every stage of education, 
we work with faculties and researchers to delve into many best practices. Here are just some of the many concepts we delve into, such as trilingual biliteracy education, how to bring about effective student-centered project-based learning, or how to bridge curriculum transition gaps, and how to balance wellness and autonomy with the need to pass standardized tests and assessments. All these are great work, but our experience at Arch counseling thousands of students into university, we realize there is one assumption here we need to question. Is this progression path sequential? We believe not. In fact, it is paramount that senior secondary students should be exposed to the world of work. Practically speaking, previewing career options aids the subject choice at school and at university. Having a sense of the world gives students a sense of agency, thereby motivating them to navigate their own path. Ultimately, it makes their university life much more relevant as they appreciate that university should not be perceived as the end goal of a student's life objective, but is the bridge into the beginning of career and real world the life they need to navigate themselves. The challenge is that the world of work keeps changing and at an increasingly rapid and unpredictable pace. A recent LinkedIn research says that by 2025, 85 million jobs will be displaced, but not to despair, 97 million will be created. Jobs we thought were secure for decades will become redundant whilst job titles would never heard of may become prominent roles. The changing of times has been well captured by OECD's recent presentation of the Learning Compass 2030, a framework that includes globally shared vision for competencies necessary for the future. It's identified seven future-oriented competencies, including, but not limited to, a focus on agency, emotional quotient EQ, and interactive learning process, including anticipation, action, reflection. While the framework does not stipulate a structured knowledge, skills, attitudes, values framework, it has identified many competencies in theory. Yet when it comes to school implementation, as operators and educators, we all know that theory and practice need to go hand in hand. Given our affiliated companies under New World and Chow Thai Phu conglomerates span 27 industries, both traditional and emerging, Chow Thai Phu Education Group is in a unique position to be at the forefront of industry evolution. And from what we see, we echo research that highlights a few skills critical for future success. Critical and creative thinking, empathy, and goal setting. According to research, 60% of managers feel critical thinking and problem-solving skills are the most lacking soft skill amongst graduates. Harvard Business Review seeks 80% correlation between empathy and performance, while Psychology Today highlights people with goals in mind and the ability to prioritize, seek resources, and monitor progress are 33% more likely to achieve. These attributes very much coincide with those highlighted in OECD Compass Framework, agency, EQ, iterative learning process. So the practical question for educators then is, can these competencies be taught through STEAM programs so students can also learn future-ready context at the same time? And when is the best time to start so these skills become habits. Is it when they have a good level of science knowledge? The answer is from young. In fact, as young as possible. In this section, I will share more about Victoria Kindergarten's teaching philosophies and its collaboration with Harvard Project Zero. Victoria Kindergarten's education philosophy for early childhood education stems upon inquiry-based learning and is a three-pronged model including best practices from IBPYP that advocate skills and competency-based learning. Teachers College Reading Writing Program with Columbia that forms a solid foundation for trilingualism 
and biliteracy. But the aspect I would like to share more is the third leg, which is the maker-centered learning concept developed in a pioneering research with Harvard Project Zero, which advocates the STEAM mindset to be instilled in early childhood education. MCL, maker-centered learning, revolves around three inquiry routines to build little maker capabilities. Looking closely, exploring complexity, finding opportunity, and this is an interactive cycle that repeats. It advocates agency by design, which means even for young children, they are encouraged to build up the sense of agency in directing own work and thoughts. Whilst the learning is guided and scaffolded by teachers who act as facilitators in the process. For example, even just using a regular everyday object, such as a chair, as a prompt. What might a chair inspire you to think? MCL proposes a series of prompts to help a child understand and internalize these inquiry routines. Can they notice everything? Explore different points of views? Reframe the question? It's quite fascinating how this simple exercise brought children to question why do chairs have four legs when they can balance on three? This illustrates a whole cycle of inquiry-based learning generated by students, processed by students, and questions addressed by students. Just last week, we hosted the first ever STEAM Festival in Hong Kong in collaboration with UNICEF to explore the notion of clean water. The event was well attended by Mr. Kevin Young, Secretary for Education, Ms. Judy Chen, President of UNICEF Hong Kong, and Guo Zhengjing, Ambassador of UNICEF. Students proudly showcased and presented their projects. Taking one of the pieces of work as an illustration, this is a functioning water filtration designed and created entirely by students at school. In the process of learning, students looked closely to see how different people from different cultures use water. As you can see on the platform, here are Play-Doh figures depicting these individuals. Students had to look closely also at animals' needs. And you can see on the right-hand side, there are these different animals on grassland showing empathy beyond humankind. They explored complexity to see what makes water dirty, naturally and unnaturally. Then they looked at the layers of materials they should put into the bottle filter that would be effective, demonstrating a complete process of critical and creative thinking. Lastly, they had to find opportunities to help habitats in the ocean. The filtration was successful and students demonstrated in confidence. We can play the video to see how the filtration worked. Filter <laughs> gun. Here's a documentation of the entire learning process. Looking closely, you can see students brainstorming actively with teachers who act as facilitators and students jotting down their observations on post-its for discussion. And then it's exploring complexity, students drawing out their filter bottle and exploring different layers of materials used for the filter. And finally, finding opportunities. How can they transfer the knowledge into practical means of helping the earth? And many more pieces here, with one functioning solar-powered fan, a highly artistic piece of monster fish that overconsumed on plastic, and the use of talking pen in presentation. Let's take a look. First, the functioning solar-powered fan. And lastly, the use of a talking pen incorporated in the presentation.
You can see with the right tasks and effective scaffolding, young children are able to look closely and explore complexity, thereby encouraging them to analyze, solve problems, and link ideas. They are able to find opportunities by seeking resources, monitoring progress, and setting goals to solve a problem. And during their teamwork, they are able to research and innovate in teams, demonstrating a high level of collaborative and empathetic behavior, both academically and socially. While the MCL framework nurtures little makers' mentality and capability, it also complements the other two prongs of PYP skill-based assessments and TCRWP literacy enhancement to give a solid and comprehensive learning outcome stemmed upon inquiry-based learning. The same mentality can be extended to primary schools as we had run design thinking course at Arch Education, where empathy is highly emphasized to be the critical first step of the entire process. By empathizing, students are able to generate opportunities that they can address. They will define the problem generate an idea to solve that problem, prototype to create a product, and lastly, test to see if the hypothesis and their solution tie. Here we see students conducting extensive reflective brainstorming. One of the girls' invention was particularly memorable. As part of the process of showing empathy, she interviewed her family members of their needs and found out that her grandmother, who was very ill, but was very scared of injecting herself with medication and often forgetting to do so. She decided to invent an automatic medicine injection wristband so that her grandmother will be periodically injected medication painlessly. In her research process, she referenced the mechanism of a mosquito stinging people that is painless, but at the same time, highly effective. This shows a full demonstration of Relate the Unrelated to solve a problem. Extending the STEAM concept further into secondary school, my alma mater, which is the school we are bringing to China, is well known for the Cornerstone projects. One of such initiatives was students coming together to build a plane from scratch, flying it and then selling it on to a training school. The initiative was open to all students from sciences and humanities as they came together and demonstrated the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration and the power of community, highly reflective of the real world context. It is therefore our vision to leverage our experiences thus far in the education industry, most importantly learn from thought leaders in China establish our ecosystem of resources, including curriculum research, talent and technology development, investments, and institutional partnerships to benefit our K-12 schools. We continue to gain latest insights into the critical and transferable skills needed in the future world of work and build world-class facilities to ensure our hardware can complement our faculty's delivery of our programs to create a top bilingual school in the Greater Bay Area. We look forward to unveiling Benenden School Guangzhou in 2023. In the meantime, if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach us. Here's our website and our QR code for contact. Thank you.